Welcome to the fifth developer fundamental. You're still going strong and I'm proud of you. You just got through the toughest section, which is DOM manipulation. But before we get going, I want to talk to you about another developer fundamental, which is accessing the DOM. JavaScript in, oh, sorry. I think we got John. How's it going, John? You and what army? All right, back to what we were talking about. JavaScript in the HTML made things on the web very exciting with all the things you can do. But it also introduced a whole slew of problems. One was inner HTML here. Every time inner HTML is set, the HTML has to be parsed, a DOM constructed, and inserted into the document. Now, what does that mean? Well, we need to recreate this tree and then add it to the web browser and then have everything in here show up on the web page. I mean, web browsers are fast, but they still have to do work. This takes time. For example, if element, let's say here, has the tag A and there's thousands of these in the DOM tree, if you call this inner HTML, it's going to cause the parser to reparse everything all over again. And this could break references to maybe click events and cause other chaos. In reality, all you want to do is attach a single new element to the end. And inner HTML is also susceptible to some attacks called cross-site scripting, which is a security problem. Now, as more and more websites try to make their web page do more than just show a page, think a web app like Udemy here. There's obviously a lot more going on than just text and style. They access the DOM and change things quite a lot. But this is a huge performance problem. In the previous videos, we learned that we want to make performant and fast websites in this day and age by minimizing the amount of backend requests we make. So if you remember, we learned that location of server is important, how many trips we make to grab all the files is important, and the size of the files matter. Now, in this lesson, we want to minimize the amount of DOM manipulation we make. If we change, let's say, one dropdown, we don't want the whole page to re-render. We want to have an interactive website but not necessarily make the web browser work because we're constantly changing things to the document object. Let's see what I'm talking about by showing you an example. If I open up the console here, and I could actually press escape, and you'll see that it toggles a new bar. And you might not see rendering, you might have to click here and select rendering. You'll be able to do something called paint flashing. And now, if I minimize this, every time this turns green, it means something's being repainted on the web page. And you can see over here, as I'm scrolling through everything, all the green actions happening. And that's a lot of, a lot of things. And Udemy does a good job of making sure that when I do this, only this section that I'm actually touching gets, gets painted. So play around with that if you want and check out some different websites. Some websites you'll notice when you scroll, it re-renders the whole thing instead of just the bar, as you can see here. But that is your lesson. You wanna minimize the amount of DOM manipulation and events. It's a very important concept in building web apps. And you also want to be smart and use the best methods to minimize this. Now, luckily for you, that is exactly why React was created. You'll learn more about it in that section, but get excited. It's gonna make things really, really fast and really simple to build. Okay, that's it for now. Until next time, bye-bye.